Remember, this show is PG-13, so you might hear a naughty word or two. Simone Biles is officially back. Simone Biles is officially back. Simone Biles is officially back. We have a competition date. It is happening. She's on the roster for Classic. This is not a drill. This is not all of the we've seen her training things. Officially, official, official today. This is June 28th. This is the 25th episode for 2023. And welcome to the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. I'm Jessica, and I'm here with Spencer from the Balance Beam Situation. Reminders, double episode this week, because we're putting out this episode to talk about Simone being back and Suni being back uh, and Jade being back uh, in competition. It's historic. Um, you also have the dumbest rules in gymnastics, the Elite Code edition that came out this week. And next week, we have an uh, interview with new Iowa State head coach, world medalist, and... Five, lots of NCAA titles. <laughs> five, four, four, five, four. four NCAA titles. Ashley Miles, uh, the new head coach at Iowa State. Um, and remember, this is your last chance to make sure that your gym membership, club gym membership is all up to date because we are doing a random drawing and giving away a full hour and a half commissioned episode on anything you want, as long as it's tangentially related to gymnastics, can't buy these anymore. Uh, and so we're giving one away to thank you guys uh, for helping us do this podcast and uh, be supporting the show. So make sure that you're up to date behind the scenes. Noon Pacific is regular every week. So we're going to be here on the Friday, the 30th and Friday, the seventh regular schedule, noon Pacific. So we'll talk all about this. Okay. Well, I feel like we're going to talk all about this right now. We are, but, but we're going to talk more about <laughs> with, it. Next with week. feedback on behind the scenes. <laughs> okay. So other people get to have opinions. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> we got the U S classic roster. It yeah. is finally released. Finally. Finally. Right. We've been yeah. waiting for this to be official for so long. Mm -hmm. Official confirmation that this is our first official confirmation that Simone Biles is returning to competition post Tokyo. We've talked about it. We've thought about it. She's been in the gym. There have been pictures, but this is Brady Quinn talked about it on that podcast. This is the first uh, official news that Simone is returning to competition and also that she is returning to competition with another Olympic all around champion, Suni Lee, who also big deal. We knew she was coming back. She said this many times that she was aiming for Paris. So it's not the same level of breaking news, but also historic, very exciting. They'll be competing at U.S. Classic, which is in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Don't Chicago let anyone say adjacent. Chicago. Yep. <laughs> um, so the senior women compete on Saturday, August 5th, as per the current schedule. Um, so yeah, we're getting the roster more than a month in advance of this competition. I wonder why. Um, if you're not, if you don't closely follow, that's very unusual for a U.S. Classic. Usually it's like if we get it the week before, we're over the moon. It's like sometimes it's, you know, the minute before. So this is this is different. And, you know, it's the Simone factor is already starting. I got yeah. a NBC News breaking news alert Simone Biles this morning. Simone Biles is coming back. I was like, oh, yeah, it hits different with Simone. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> These are this different. <laughs> So, I mean, thank, oh, thank you, Simone, just for getting the roster early. I'd like to say thank you, thank <laughs> know, you, thank you so much. Oh, we re really appreciate it, Simone. So we have been talking about this for a long time, and we were talking about how incredibly historic this is, and we believe this has never, ever, ever happened before. Two Olympic all-around champions in the same competition ever. So when's the last time this happened? No. Not ever, but this is ever. I think, kind of. I think that understood. was what we were thinking. We were thinking, and then you researched. So what did you find? No, we weren't thinking ever. I think <laughs> what we were. Just don't tell me what I was thinking. <laughs> it's the royal we. You know, I enjoy the royal we. Spencer never had a wrong thought. So when's the last time this happened? Right. Um. So I think what we had been talking about was kind of like oh. Simone, Suni, potentially Gabby Douglas, who is training in the mix as another one, but she's not on the U.S. Classic roster. Um, we were like, oh, that's amazing, but it must have happened, like, in a Soviet time, right? right. There Soviet must have been a like Soviet team that was, like, 80 Olympic all-around champions. But no, there was always, like, one 
like Latina and then she'd retire and then Tereshova and then she'd retire. And it was always like one and then the next. And this is one of the first times we've ever seen, like even not talking about, you know, extrapolating forward to the Olympics, which we will do because you can't help it. Um, just at U.S. Classic, this will be one of the first times that we've had two returning Olympic all-around champions competing in the same meet. Like, at 1966 Worlds, we had uh, Latinina and Cheslavska, who were both Olympic all-around champions at that point. Latinina had won in 56 and 60, Cheslavska in 64. They both competed at 66 Worlds. Uh, but that's that's how rare this is, that we're going back like to the 60s to find examples, because usually we've seen gymnasts like there'll be one olympic all-around champion she might come back to the next olympics and then she doesn't win the all-around and then she retires and it's kind of that's the cycle or immediately retires after the olympics because it's like boom i'm sad why would i do this anymore this is dumb see you later peace out which was for like decades was the normal the normal expectation but like oh yeah i won my olympic title and now i'm done so this is huge and it's I think because gymnastics record keeping is so abysmal, I don't think it's necessarily reinforced that ha- just how rare this is to have two um, Olympic all around champions competing at any competition together. Like, right. I don't it's- think this has ever happened at a national meet. We had to go back to a time when there was a country that doesn't exist anymore, you guys. That's how <laughs> long it's been since this happened, ever. Yeah. Um, it's just such a big deal that this is happening. It's so incredibly historic. Um, and obviously, there's been times with an Olympic champion on an event, but two all-around Olympic champions, like, that is right. huge. Yeah. This is happening. And I want to talk about Gabby for a second, because what's really interesting to me is that um, the the press release from USA Gymnastics made a point of saying that this is the roster. The time is closed to register for this, but that doesn't mean that necessarily other people can't be added because there is in some notes of some, i.e. like uh, the international elite committee thing somewhere where it says, basically, if you come to camp and you show that you're ready, but you were injured or some circumstance, you can qualify at camp to classic, which hopefully they've actually added that to the procedures now, because it used to not be in the procedures. It was just in the notes. So I am still leaving the door open. (laughs) Oh, Jessica. That Gabby will go to camp or send in a video, go to camp next week, or it's two weeks from now, there's a senior national team camp, and we'll qualify that way to classic. Or maybe she's going to go the Allie Raisman route, and basically you condition and do basics for a full year before you come back to competition. So maybe we won't see her until the fall, and she'll go do some DTB cups or something like that and do <laughs> roll roll out that way the year before the Olympics. But yeah, that's that, the I door read, is not I read- closed the thing about the deadline and the registration, but it not being confirmed to be, we're putting this out now because we really want to sell tickets. But if someone gets injured, it's not our fault. and doesn't compete. Like don't come for us. That's how I read that sentence. I read um, it as Simone doesn't want this to have blow up right before she competes. And she wants to get all the press nonsense out of the way now. So she can just focus on smart. Yeah. Smart. I mean, but also getting all the press nonsense out of the way. Impossible. It's yeah. going to be regardless. Um, but we were talking about how unprecedented this is and how rare it is for uh, women's all-around champions to return and to compete together. Like, no Olympic gymnastics team, men or women's, has ever had two all-around Olympic champions on the same team. Ever. ever. Like, Ever. only after a new champion has won in that Olympics, like in Tokyo, Suni wins the all-around. So then for event finals, she and Simone were technically two Olympic all-around champions on the same team. That's the context. But, like, if Lee and Biles or some combination of them with Gabby Douglas were on the 2024 Olympic team, which, you know, let's not beat around the bush. That's why they're competing. They're going right. for 2024. It's, they're not here to, like, Simone doesn't need any more of those salad bowls for, like, <laughs> most amazing, wonderful person or something that <laughs> they get. They're not here for the national team warm-ups. Like, they're here to because they're going for the Olympics. Um, so if they were on the team, that would be a first on the same team. Which is pretty weird, but also cool. Yeah. yeah. It's so, I just can't, I, I, I'm, this is so freaking exciting. 
It's so exciting. It's also exciting that they... <sighs> okay, we don't know for sure they don't hate gymnastics, but they don't hate gymnastics enough to come back and compete again. <laughs> or they're it not so broken that they yeah. can still do gymnastics. This is the thing. I mean, Suni has been doing gymnastics. She hasn't quit. Yeah. Um, and and Simone has been back doing gymnastics. Um, but I we know now. But, um, you know, and this is her third Olympics that she's coming back for. But it's just that's another unprecedented American thing that, you know, we haven't had people that except Simone who did, and Gabby who have hated it so much that they're coming back. So that's good. Um, the <laughs> third Olympics hated. in a row of <laughs> not, not hating. Not so much. <laughs> Yes. I know you're so into like your your uh, instinct is like, and then you hate gymnastics. <laughs> yeah, you know we've had Allie come back for a second Olympics. We had Shannon and Gabby come back for a second Olympics. Uh, we've had uh, Gabby Douglas do it. We've had um, yeah, Nastia tried. Um, but anyway, it's just very exciting. I'm just so glad that they're back. Okay, so let's talk about Simone specifically. So is yeah. this surprising? No, she said she was going to do this. I mean, she said she's never said she retired. So to me, it's not surprising. Right. I mean, she never, com I would say, fully committed. Like, oh, I'm training for 2024. But I don't think it's surprising. I don't, I don't ever think she would have wanted to have to the Tokyo Olympic performance be the end of her gymnastics career. I feel like she's too competitive for that, if nothing else. Like, you, you have to be that competitive to be this good. And you don't want that. Like, that wasn't what she would have imagined that wasn't the best that her capabilities would have allowed her to be so you know there's always going to feel like there's unfinished business so in that way it's not surprising to me is the timing surprising to you no i think last time she came back a year before i think she went to the worlds the year before and then came back 2018 well, she went to 2018 worlds oh yeah so she came back and 2019 worlds but in and terms then, of the gymnastics in COVID. terms of the timeline it's the same timeline it's just the olympics are closer together yeah it's so, the timeline in terms of the amount of time in between yeah the olympics. and yeah. she also she i mean she said in an exclusive interview with scott bregman of the olympic channel during the tour that you know if she hadn't closed the door she was just still processing what had happened and we mm -hmm. know that she never left left the drug testing pool and when you leave the drug testing pool that's when you're really like i'm done because then you have to register again like six or nine months before you're even eligible to compete again so that's the real telltale sign that you're leaving the door open. So I don't think it's surprising. And I think we all thought she would come back. Just like Jade Carey said when she tripped going into her vault when she was, you know, if she could beat Andrade was going to win the Olympic champion potentially on vault. Uh, that she was like, said to her dad first thing, all right, we're coming back here. And she's also <laughs> competing here. Yeah. The Olympic champion on the floor. So I do feel like there's an aspect of this also that I think with Simone, unlike maybe any other gymnast gymnastically i think she could have left it to the last second like she could have been like i don't want to do any of this i'll train I'll, to come back for like 2024 trials and i'll come back for that gymnastically she could have done that and be simone about it but i think that it's a solid preparation for being asked about the twisties a thousand million times to come back now and try to get as much of it like get ready for that and how that's going to feel so that you're not coming back. And then s someone's like, Simone, you're about to compete in the Olympic all around final. How do you feel about the twisties? And she's like, Jesus Christ. Seriously. Thanks. You brought them on. Great. <laughs> Which is a completely valid question. It's I a mean, valid question. Yeah. Your uh, job I... is to tell the story of the meet. The story right. of the meet's going to be uh, Simone. How are the twisties? But you know, it's still annoying to her. I'm sure. And I think, you know, we know from watching Simone's career for so long, like she usually has in her comeback year a wonky meet uh, where she might fall or just have something off and she gets out of her system and then she's fine. So or I think it's a smart Doha Pearl plan. that ha happens to happen. Or the Doha Pearl, the great kidney stone of 2018. The world championships where five people saw her compete and they were all other athletes or expat kids. Yep. Ah, good times. Okay, so she's automatically the favorite for Paris, right? Or Sunni's beat her twice in all around competition. So was it trials she beat her? And uh, obviously at the Olympics, but she didn't compete all around. Um, was it trials or championships? There's one day of one meet that Sunni beat her before the Olympics. Trials or championships the year before Tokyo? 
Sensor, I expect you to remember Rare. this. <laughs> I only remember final results. I don't remember one day results. Call me when it's the end of the meet. <laughs> oh, fine. There was one day that it wasn't the first time. Um, so tell me, what do you think? Yeah. Club Gym Nerd. Get discounts and first dibs on live show tickets and extra podcasts every week. Athlete dossiers, code guides, commission your own segments of the show. It also makes a great gift. Check it out at gymcastic.com at the Join the Club tab. I mean, yeah, I, Simone is automatically becomes a favorite at any meet when she steps on the competition floor. Obviously, my favorite thing about a comeback is like doing the new code, like applying the routines to the new code, because we've had rule changes since the Tokyo Olympics. So it's interesting to see how the rule changes, I think, overall definitely benefit Simone. Like she did nothing and gained difficulty. Like she her like her floor routine from her most difficult possible option of floor routine from 2021 went up two tenths in difficulty without her changing anything because of the ch- the addition of a two tenth dismount bonus, which you have now for doing a difficult dismount. And someone's like, difficult dismount, please. <laughs> Uh, in my sleep um how about a super difficult dismount do i get four tenths no okay but yeah so that's very like simone already has built in dismount bonuses that she wasn't getting before that now she's getting so overall the code benefits her i'm excited to see a floor difficulty score in the sevens which she could do that would be fun um She'll have to do a couple changes. She'll need to change her bars composition a little bit, which we've talked about on Behind the Scenes, because she has a Tkachev and a Tkachev piked in her routine, and those are from the same root, which you can't have count both in a routine anymore, so there'd have to be some rearrangement there. Um, she'd have to change her technique. She has genius bar construction coaches, <laughs> so they are going to have that under control, I think. I mean, I'm not saying they're not going to have it under control. It's no, just No, I know. I'm just saying. I'm making the point yeah. that, like, the, oh, specialty? Oh, yes. Yeah, specialty for those two. Bars. Um, beam, she was doing uh, side split jumps and straddle jumps with the old technique, which she'd either have to change technique or just get rid of them. She has enough skills. Like Yeah. So basically you have them. to uh, complete your split before the turn. Or vice versa. If it's a half turn, you can't do quarter turn, split quarter turn anymore. Yeah, which, which is, is what easier almost way to everyone do was doing, including Simone. Um, yeah. So she just have to change how she does that, which I think is doable for her. Or just like I'm not doing that. Yeah, these are stupid. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do a back tuck fall. That's worth more, right? <laughs> I love that she could have a uh, Algerian or China level on bars. D score, but on floor with a seven, uh, yeah. seven one. Also, not that far behind on bars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's Simone. She doesn't have a weak event. I mean, literally, she puts on a leotard. She doesn't even have to announce a comeback or be on the floor. She puts a leotard on at any time. She's Olympic champion threat. Um, so, how is this? Uh, let's look at the history of mm-hmm. what she's done over time. The legacy. Well, I think that what's interesting to me um, is how rare it would be. It is because now she's said, you know, she's competing. She's on the list for a gymnast who has won the Olympic all around title to go to another Olympics, not win the all around title, and then continue Mm. competing. That almost doesn't happen. You have like, you know, Nadia will come back after 76, compete in 80, but then she's done after 80 when Davidova wins. Like, to come back again, which Simone would do, that would also be apply to Gabby. Um, we don't really see. And no gymnast has ever done, like, the Grover Cleveland and won non-consecutive Olympic all-around titles. Like, no one's not been in an Olympics, not won, and then come back. The Grover Cleveland. Uh-huh. Yes. And, like, I was just going to say that. It was my favorite non-consecutive president. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, right. Three Olympics is unusual anyway for all around Olympic champions. Like Larissa Latinina did it, Vera Cheslavska did it, Ludmila Tereshova did it. And then, you know, if Simone ends up going to the Olympics in 2024, she would just be the fourth and the first since 1976. Right. People who win don't continue that long. Um, so, you know, it's pretty impressive. Latinina in 64 was the only 
uh, Olympic all-around champion to return to two more Olympics, which then Simone would try to do. Um, Cheslavska is the only one to win the all-around at her third Olympics. She would also, so should Simone, you know, we're, I know, we're going, we're taking a lot of leaps, but this is what we do. We're theorizing. Should Simone win the t- Olympic all around to 2024, that would make her the oldest Olympic all around champion since 1952. Yeah. At like 27, she'll be 27 then, I think. Which is huge. That's a huge yeah. deal. Not the oldest in terms of- gymnast Olympian, because obviously she has to keep competing into her late 40s well, to, she'd have to achieve so. that. Right. She has to choose so. But, but like, for yeah. we're talking all around champions. Um, mm-hmm. It's been a really long time since there's even been an all-around champion in their 20s. Yeah. Which, as we've seen the age increase and kind of this idea of, um, you know, gymnastics is a sport for teenagers, blah, blah, blah. That'll, I'm sure, be in 900 more articles about Simone coming back, like, (sighs) in a sport that's typically dominated by teenagers. Like, read a book. Learn a book. Learn a book. Like, the average age is not teenagers. But it's still the Olympic all-around champions hasn't hasn't caught up to the average age of all the competitors and so it would be a big deal to have all of these 20 year olds on the u.s team going for it do you think that simone is aware of the new research uncovered by uh uncle tim phd at gymnastics history.com that she is actually not uh the owner of the olympic medal record um it was thought that world she, Olymp- world and world olympic and olympic Metal, right? It was thought that she had beat Latinida's record, but she has not because in, back in the day, they for some reason, some statistician decided not to count all of the gold medals that Latinida had won. Um, and so the record that was originally out there was wrong. Do you think that there's part of Simone that's like, um, I have to beat Latinida? and be the real, true, all-time greatest, greatest, greatest? Or do you think it has? she's like, I don't care about someone who did a layout full as their hardest pass in Soviet times. Uh, I want to have a competition where I come back and I feel good about what I did and go out the way I want to. I mean, no slight on gymnastics-history.com. I don't think Simone's like, has uh, alerts set up for the posts. <laughs> you know, I don't think she's like reading it in depth. <laughs> I feel like her team is, is probably aware of this. Her people. Sim- this is more Simone based. I'm doing things for herself. Simone is always reading that site on the beach with a cocktail and her grill in, and she Wouldn't is in a be? bikini. Like, what is the latest that happened when China emerged from the communist bloc and went back into competition and rejoined the FIG? What do I need to know? Obviously. Um, but I, I don't know. Part of me is like, I think part of it is like having to prove herself. Part of it is I feel like there's... Um, just because she's a, she likes to win. She likes to, you know, dominate those bitches. Let's be honest. Um, this is why these gymnasts are so freaking good. Uh, but the other thing is I feel like there might be part of her that's like, you know, am I going to regret this if I don't try now? Like, she can always come back later if she wanted to. She could have a kid and come back. She can do all that stuff. It's all possible. But is she going to feel like, is this my window? And then I just don't want to think about this, and I want to move on in my life. Like, I want to start the new chapter. She just got married. She's, you know, it's going to be, I feel like, she talked about how hard it was, like, right a a week after they got married, then her husband got transferred or whatever it is, picked up, hired by another team, and had to move away. So... She and how hard that was. She's bawling her eyes out. It's like we just went on our honeymoon and now we don't live together anymore, you know? So I can see her being like, I want to get this out of the way. And then for the rest of my life, I can do whatever I want and I don't have to worry or think of, about the what ifs. Is that a yes? Was that an oral sure. yes? Your yes. head nod? That, I'm giving an oral yes in that. Like, I passed out halfway through that because you were talking about people's feelings and, like, their <laughs> hopes and dreams for the future. And I was like, it, if you're not going to talk about a Tkachev, why am I here? Is basically how I felt there. So, yes, I, pa- I passed out for a second. Sure. Yes. Simone, 
what have a lovely fruitful life and do whatever you want to do i don't want to leave out the other current reigning all-around yeah. olympic champion sunisa lee who we have been watching compete immediately after the olympics she went to auburn she competed there she just mm -hmm. finished her career at auburn after two years but she wasn't able to finish the 2023 season because she said on Twitter in April, I have been dealing with quote, I've been dealing with non gymnastics health related issue involving my kidneys. Um, but she also said that would not let you know, derail her from her plans to compete in Paris. She obviously was on top chef in Paris, which is the real way that you say I'll be competing again. I'm on top. She was adorable. Such a good sport. She's going to get so many more like opportunities to do stuff like that because she was so excellent on top chef she was not in the nbc or gmc or whatever morning show that is that they had the podium from last year's national champions at in paris mm -hmm. um they had connor shilise and jordan um on there i hear that uh connor is now training uh back home in las vegas her original home so that's another um change that's happening for her and hopefully like she's just happy and at home and enjoying herself and loving her life which is the most important thing so but i want to talk about suny and mm -hmm. the legacy that this is to have her come back right away the same way that gabby douglas did the same way that simone did um mm -hmm. are, do you have the same expectations for her since she competed so successfully in college up into her health issues and she's been posting all these crazy ass bar transitions yeah. she's like what can you think up remember when we talked <laughs> about oh a sites to a bahard wash that's gonna be Some super people. hard and she was like man i've got it here here's my video like, i've been doing that since I, for 10 years um yeah i think that if I'm SUNY, I'm very glad Simone is coming back because it kind of takes yeah. the focus off and takes the pressure off, especially because, you know, she's had to come back from whatever that was involving her kidneys at the end of the NCAA season. It's kind of, you have more of an allowance for a slower, I think, comeback. Not everyone's going to be like, SUNY, 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 is she doing the all around? Is she doing all her difficulty? Da, da, da. I think there is, you know, a more of a grace period then for her to just be like, we'll see how it goes. Paris is a year away. Here is the process. But, you know, as you mentioned, she's also posting amazing bars videos. So we're like, you know, 6-9 is the highest bars difficulty in the world so far, SUNY. Just putting that out there. Is, the, is that goals? <laughs> Oh, Suni's going to have an 8.0. It's going to be the first 8.0 D score <laughs> ever. The, the, the judges are going to be like, wait, we didn't think this was humanly possible. So how can we uh, fix the code now so that this isn't possible in the future? Wait, one question about the Suni versus Simone comeback. So, so uh, Simone, two S names, yeah. it's hard. Simone's <laughs> coaches are French. How dare that? <laughs> yeah. They're French. Cecile Laurent. The, the Olympics are in Paris. Is there going to be like a home team factor because of her coaches uh, and Paris and France? What is a home team factor? What you does know, that mean? Like, I don't mean cheating. I mean, is it going to be easier because the French are going to love her even more because of her French coaches? Not that everyone doesn't already love her. They didn't love her. But I'm just saying, is it? Yeah, there I don't some think that's... <laughs> no, there's going to be like, oh, extra baguettes because French coaches. G I can mean, you stop sure, with the cultural food stereotypes, Spencer? My <laughs> God. Sure. Right. sure. There's, there's a French bonus. <laughs> yeah. She, and she's gone there and trained before. And she has Melanie training. Melanie de Jesus Santos obviously is going to be competing um, at Classic as well we already know about that um and of course i already i mean there's a lot of p amazing uh gymnasts competing including olympic champion uh on the the floor not vault i always want to say vault but she won floor you guys you Jade were, ready, Perry, you were ready for vault yeah also has been competing the whole entire time um so how does this compare history wise for uh suny coming back and competing yeah we think because suny is younger and newer and we think of like oh this is more expected which it is but also still unusual in terms of the potential like if suny were to repeat as olympic all-around champion 
no one's repeated since Cheslavska, 68, on the women's side. And, you know, also, Suni, Olympic champion in her 20s, would be Olympic champion in her 20s, as we've talked about. That is, has been a very long time since that has happened, since also 1968. So that in itself is history-making, or potentially history-making, as well. And hopefully a sign of things to come. So you guys... One Olympics, poof! <laughs> I am just like, very excited for all of our listeners who have been paying attention and all the gymnastic listeners are already like, classic's going to be epic. We uh, know what's happening and probably already have their tickets. But how fast do you think after this news came out today did classic tickets sell out? Are they going to be like, we should have charged? <laughs> um, Olympic depends trials. if they're as expensive as trials tickets. Oh, my God. People are like <laughs> starting GoFunds- GoFundMe so they can go to, to trials. Um, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, I think this is no. I think this okay. is no, or my final thoughts. I think I got all of my history facts out there. I was like, bullet point history fact, bullet point history fact. So I feel very safe and content that uh, everything is out there. I got to talk about history, never happened before since Soviet times. And then if Gabby, but if Gabby comes back, you guys, I'm not shutting the door on Gabby because we know she's training. Uh, if she comes back, it will be even more historic. We we'll throw these history books out the window because three Olympic all around champions at this, even if they all go to camp together, the history, you guys, my God, the ground will shake. Lightning will strike three places at the same time. Oh, it's so exciting, you guys. Oh, okay. Um, I do want to tell you guys that we can talk about this more and in depth. And obviously, I expect everyone to be making up their routines and mm-hmm. cutting, mm-hmm. splicing all the routines together to tell us what Su- you think Suni and Simone <laughs> To find out doing. how Suni can get an 8-0-D score on bars. And how Simone could get an 8 d score on floor. Yeah, Easy. That, that's it. all we're asking for, you guys. I know you can do it. <laughs> so we'll talk about all of this on Behind the Scenes on Friday at noon Pacific. So before you take off on your 4th of July holidays or you're driving, you can, you know, put it on, not looking at the screen or anything, and come join us live. Directions are in the post for Behind the Scenes. Um, and you can ask questions live. And uh, also you can listen to Behind the Scenes on your favorite podcast player. This is our feedback show where we take all of your questions live and questions from the forum or that you write into us at gymcastic at gmail.com. And we talk about all the scenarios, answer all the things. I'm so excited for Friday. Um, and next week we have our episode coming up with Ashley Miles, our interview with Ashley Miles. Um, very candid, very interesting why. I had no idea that this is why she went into coaching. Um, and I feel like it'll be very relatable to a lot of women. Um, and I am so looking forward to you guys hearing that and please i hope you're enjoying our dumbest rules in gymnastics episode that came out earlier this week all right you guys enjoy thanks for being here and we will see you friday on behind the scenes in new pacific thanks for listening take off and gay split on rights <laughs>